We are in Genesis chapter 41. We are continuing the story of Joseph. I never thought that we would be on this this long. But the more I listen to, to it, I, I put it on Bible Gateway, and I just listen to it over and over again, the more I just see how God uses these things in each one of our lives. You know, if we just submit whatever situations come our way to the Lord and know that His Word says that somehow all things will well work together for the good to those who love Him. And if you know you love the Lord, we rest on that assurance that we're not going to go by what we're seeing in the natural, what we're feeling in the natural, what emotions we may have. We are going to trust God. Trust Him with all we have. Knowing that in the end, we win. Because as I always say, we are not the victims. We are the victorious ones in Christ. Because of what Jesus did on Calvary, we have the victory. I mean, we're reading Old Testament stories. That was before Jesus. And yet, they had that hope. They knew that one day that Messiah was going to come and make things right. We can look back at Calvary and say, He's coming, but He's coming back again. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords, one day every single knee is going to bow before Him. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Those who accept Jesus now here, we one day, we're going to bow down like everybody else, but we will bow down rejoicing because we know He is our Lord and our Savior and He has been preparing a place for us to enjoy for eternity. So we truly have a reason to have a hope because our hope is in God. Our hope is in the promises that are in His Word. And you know, please be careful on the translations that you use. Make sure that's one that's been tried and true. I mean, I've been reading a lot out of the New King James Version because I know that the these and thous can be hard for some people. And I want you to be able to understand those who may sometimes maybe later on will listen to this on YouTube. Um, I don't want there to be a stumbling block as far as, I shouldn't say the word stumbling block, uh, something that causes them to just... Oh, that, I, I just don't understand that language. No, so I, I'm going a lot with the New King James Version now. But there is some brand new versions out there that I'm just not not sure of. Because, I mean, I like to look at different ones and compare and then see. So Satan is very deceptive. we got to be careful what we hear. He likes to tickle our ears and just give us enough truth like he did Eve to make us think that what he's saying is good, but yet the important part is missing out. So, but here we go. We're going to be in verse, uh, I'm going to pick up in verse 37. Here Joseph had been given the interpretation. God gave Joseph the interpretation of the dream, so he told Pharaoh what the dreams meant, why it was two dreams. It was because this is definitely something that God is getting ready to do. That's why he gave you the dream twice in two different formats. Um, God gives Joseph the interpretation to give the king. He makes sure he lets the king know, Pharaoh know I should say, excuse me, lets Pharaoh know that you know what? This is God. He says, inasmuch as God has shown you all this. I'm sorry. Verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such. So, I'm sorry. Backtrack. Joseph told Pharaoh. And I had flipped the page. That it was the Lord. It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace concerning that dream that he had. So he tells Pharaoh, it, it all makes sense to Pharaoh. And this is Pharaoh's response in verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, because Pharaoh, after Joseph said the recommendations and the things that he thought needs to be done, 
you know, that the Lord showed him how to put a fifth of the grain aside, start storing away for when the seven years of famine were going to come, and how he needed to establish uh, one person that everyone can come to and have other helpers to help him do all this that needs to be done. Well, Pharaoh, hearing all this advice, says, So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Pharaoh recognized that Joseph had wisdom because of God. God was giving him this wisdom. And he says, You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I great excuse me. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. <laughs> Within a 24-hour period, Joseph went from being a prisoner to being top man right under Pharaoh. See, Joseph was faithful for 13 years through every situation he had gone through with you know, being sold as a slave, being in Potiphar's wife, uh, in Potiphar's life, and then having his wife accuse him falsely of trying to, to pretty much rape her. Being in prison for two years, the gentleman that he had helped and interpreted the dream forgot about him. Two full years. And then finally, he remembers and tells the Pharaoh when Pharaoh has a dream. And then God says, it is time. How long? He was about 17 years old when he had the dream with his brothers. A dream of where he saw his family you know, bowing down to him. And the, the jealousy that it brought so much that they almost killed him but instead they sold him God's plans are going to take place was the journey easy for Joseph not at all there may be things in your life that are going on and you're like I don't understand you know God has put these things in my life my these plans that I have in my heart but yet I'm not seeing it happen Oh, it took 13 years for Joseph. It took being in prison, falsely accused. But Joseph kept his heart toward God. He didn't complain. Instead, he was faithful in whatever God brought and honored God in whatever situation. We need to do the same things. And then if God has something for you to do, you know what? There is nothing or anyone that can stop it. Only you can stop it if you say and start complaining and start going against God because you don't like the rough times. But if you submit to God what he's put for you to do, you will do if you submit. David, before he became king, had some rough times in a long period of time. God's timing is not our timing. He looks at things from the point of eternity. We look at things from the now. I'm going to finish off in verse, uh, these just a few verses here in 42. It says, Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. That signet ring of authority that when he sealed it, that was it. Pharaoh took off of his hand and put it in Joseph's hand. Wow. Jewish slave, not who any Egyptian would put in positions of authority. 
God raised the second under Pharaoh. Tomorrow will continue. <laughs> Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The Lord is with you no matter what situation you're going through. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep a praise song in your heart. You may weep sometimes and cry. That's okay. And David in Psalms does that many a times. That's normal. We're in a flesh right now. We're in this body. We have these emotions. God understands that. But then encourage yourself in the Lord, knowing that just like God worked things out for Joseph, He's going to work things out to you. He's a faithful God. See you tomorrow. <laughs>